G'day guys, and welcome to the Waffle Pan with the Magnificent Margot. Um, this is the episode where I get to talk about whatever and whenever I like. Um, I have actually had an absolute This is the week that was. Um, for me, as you all know, I was actually on day camp, um, which was amazing. Um, I had a great week. Um, I did a phenomenal amount of damper cooking. Um, every day, well, not only damper cooking, but also other recipes. Every day, um, the idea of day camp is we have a section in it, which is the cooking section, and there's a kitchen ladies, and then there's our, my fire area, where we have lots of little pit fires and everything made up for the kids to cook in, their normal meals. We also have a very large fire that generates a huge amount of coals and things like that to assist them with starting their fire. But this year, didn't have to use as many coals on assisting them with their fire starting abilities, because the guys we had actually were amazing. They did a great job at just making their own fires. Which is brilliant. It meant that I didn't have to use my coals on them, and I could use it on their meals and stuff that they cooked. Now, when I mean meals, they made like dampers. Now, dampers basically bread just cooked in a fire. Um, along with them, some of them do pizza dampers, um, which are amazing. That's quite good. Some do like chocolate, and some do other wonderful bits of character stuff as well in them, like. Um, uh, marshmallows and chocolate and all sorts of bits and pieces and it just turns the goop and mush and it's just disgusting to cook. Um, you also do Billy Tea. We've had a few groups do Billy Tea. Sometimes people do um, some white chocolate stuff where they put white chocolate into a um, into a Billy. They melt it down and they use it on different stuff. We've had um, nachos with cheese and dip and they cooked in a pan. It Absolutely beautiful. Um, then there was, uh, what else was there? Oh, people were making like cinnamon apples. Um, they were using whole apples and throwing cinnamon over them, or they were using brown sugar to make a sweetened apple, roasted in, of course, the hot coals, just wrapped it sort of full. We had one group that did like a lemon meringue thing, a magic, or something, lemon chocolate, and they actually, well, orange actually. I carved out the centre of an orange, left a bit of the orange in it for flavour, poured chocolate in it, put the cap back on the top, that was me clapping my hands by the way, and um, they, when they did that, they also uh, allowed the orange to seep through the chocolate, so it melted all down, and once it cooled down and hardened, it was like a beautiful little chocolate orange thing, and it was amazing, all they could eat it, so it was warm had the orange flavor go through the chocolate, so it was brilliant. All these, all these actual wonderful things we've had this year, and it was probably one of the better day camps we've had in a long time for that whole cooking side. Um, so I was, I was absolutely blown away by how amazing it was, um, and and that's what I, I love about day camp. All the kids getting involved doing those sort of things, getting outside, and, and not many of them would get the chance to actually cook on an open fire like that, and not many people actually are able to, we have camp ovens there that people cook cakes in, we actually had a cake this year, we had, oh, what was the other thing we had, we had a apple pie thing that we cooked in the camp ovens too, it's like you can do anything just over fire, and I really do strongly recommend people, like, I know that you're not really to have open fire stuff in the backyards or anything else, but go for it. Buy yourself a camp. It costs too much. I don't know why I think it only costs about hundred dollars or whatever to actually have one. And and things like that. And that's why that's why I'm talking about it. It's just beautiful. Um, the way you can do things. And that's why I strongly do encourage that 
you do drop things like that and get your kids at some game, get them involved in this sort of stuff. Um, like if you want to ask me questions about like I've been doing it down for four years now and we've got it down to a pretty fine art where we can get the damper to come out pretty perfect. Every now and then you get a burnt one where you've got the heat that's not exactly perfect and, and that's just the way it goes. Um, you, you can't get everything perfect but we can try our best and damper normally only takes about 10 minutes of a really really hot fire. Um, so it's been brilliant to watch all these kids have a great week and a very safe week. It's probably been our safest day camp to date. We've had no real major injuries or problems and I had a ball, absolute ball. I loved every minute of it and I was really, really, really happy. Um, and, and I love it and I don't think I'm going to give it up anytime soon. Um, caught up with a lot of old friends um, that I haven't seen for quite a long time and it was brilliant. Um, we tr they, they actually tried something new this year at day camp. They actually, um, yeah, as you can see, when I get bored, I start involving my clients. Um, they had the year eights there. Now, we normally don't have year eights because year eights are still too close to year seven. Um, and they sort of know the year seven is more or less because they've been to school the year before them. So it's very hard to have them as helpers because they're not interested. And this year we discovered we've lost too many of the previous year, year seveners, um, because we haven't given them the incentive to be with us for that year and by saying, sorry, you can't be here because you're year eight. So this year they made a special day camp year eight section. Um, and the idea is to actually teach them what they need to know to be great helpers and leaders in the future for day camp. So this event can keep running for many, many, many more years. Um, I think we're actually up to 42 years of day camp and that is incredible. It's been running longer than I've been alive. They're trying to actually figure that sort of stuff out. They need to talk to a few people to find out that information and they haven't found it out as of yet. So with a bit more time and things like that, um, I'm sure they will. Um, but that's, uh, that, that's, that's pretty much day camp. Like they also do a bit of artwork stuff. They do um, but it's called craft. Those are doing a bit of bits and pieces. Um, then there's also um, different games. We have Earth Ball, we have um, uh, parachute stuff where you can use a parachute for games. They have um, an orienteering thing where they do obstacles and stuff like that, where they go around trying to find little things or clues to get to the next one. Um, they do get like a jumping castle thing. And just Um, some years we've had abseiling, this year we didn't have abseiling. Um, they do canoeing. Um, the year eights being the first grade, we decided to make it a bit more interesting. I think she went off to the day to play laser tag, which would have been quite fun. Um, not quite as much fun as what paintball and thing is, things are like that, like airsoft. Now, I would love to be involved in airsoft, I just gotta more or less get involved with someone in the local area. That's 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 one thing I, I would like to get into. I've done a little bit of paint in the past. Um, I haven't done any laser tag. Laser tag is basically right? use laser guns, similar to your laser force, more or less, but out out in out the outdoors. So not, not as dangerous as airsoft. Um, so there's all those sort of interesting bits and pieces that we actually had going on. So it was really really good. Um, and I absolutely had it. And I really did enjoy it and I love the whole way it feels and everything that goes about it. So it's, it was a good, good week. Um, what else is new? Um, well, as you all know, I've been playing a hell of a lot of um, lower tier battles. The um, reason is I'm actually trying to get into historical battles now. I know a lot of people don't recognize historical battles like they should and I strongly recommend that if you're not involved now get involved on any server across the world. Um, historical battles in 
all the tanks may not actually um, be around in the next patch, by the way it seems. And I've been told it's not looking like it will be. Historical battles have not been a very big success for the game. Now, I tend, tend to differ. I actually think that it's been great. Um, I've really, really enjoyed the battles I've done, but half the job is not what's playing. Um, and that's really disappointing, because from the point of view of, um, well, let's say, for instance, um, I can't believe this guy chased me for as long as he did. This is just... I get all the way back to the airfield before this guy actually does anything to me. I'm just rolling the plane ever so slightly from side to side, pulling it across, making him shoot. He just follows me all the way. I'm trying to use this hill here as a bit of a... move a shield to get him off me. It doesn't work too well. All the other stuff. Um... So yeah, I've actually unlocked, I actually really unlocked all of the tanks I require for Star Wars. I've got one British tank I unlocked, so I actually played a lot. Stumbled across a lot of great tanks. Um, I started playing the Hertz, the Hertz was great with its, um, with its gun. I just fire HEs, same as what the Cruiser 2 does in Tier 3, I fire HEs. I've also got the, uh, the Stug 3B, which of course you can fire HEs at everyone, and it's, it's brilliant. Um, I actually played my first KV1 nothing but HEs. Um, generally I do the high penetration gun, this time I decided to use the Dirt Gun. And it, it's one of the matches I am going to put up tonight. I've recorded a few different videos, so it just depends on how I feel. So the problem is this has a long place. Um so yeah, I've I've done I've done some it's been pretty cool. Um and I must admit it, it's caught me off guard. Um all the things that I've actually been able to do lately in a lot of tears and I've had some great games. Um, I've been really, really, really happy with um, some of the players have joined me on the lot of tanks too. Um, I am actually feeling pretty confident now. Um, we're getting to the stage where I've almost got 9 to 10 people I know playing, which means we might actually get... I'm going to really push hard to get people to play a couple of um, I really would love to do some companies and then put them up. Similar to what I'm doing with the historical battles. Really pushing historical battles, and I think everyone should get involved in it. Um, when my team does get gathered, um, we might even do some team battles um, later on once people get up to the sort of tier 8 uh, with different tanks. Now, not all everyone will have the wide variety that Kaz and I do. Um, maybe Show will probably have two tanks. Um, Mr. Jellos was actually on. He might actually have a few more tanks than, than what he does to actually be able to join in, but he doesn't play that much. Um, along with um, uh, Slicer Chris, um, he he hasn't actually been playing a lot, and his mate. Um, then you've got, of course, Blackadder, um, Harlequin, you've got, um, Zara, and you've got, um, I think that's okay. There's too many names, too many, I don't know what they're their real names, but I'm not using their real names on the internet, because I don't think that's fair for them unless they really want me to. Um, it's going to be interesting when we get into actual blackout. I said that I might have said blackout. If I hadn't, sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. I don't think any of you guys really watched this anyway. I think, um, 
as does. Um, she is watching these sort of things. So, yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite, quite a lot of fun. So, it's going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, let's see how things go. Um, so yeah, it's going to be quite interesting in the upcoming months, um, for me and World of Tanks particularly. Um, we all do actually play, um, in, uh, what do you call it, War Thunder? We don't get all the games together, that, that, it's sort of, it's a very big select crowd. Now, as you can see, in this battle, um, a VK-30, now this is probably one of the better 31s, anyway. Um, I finally made up my mind which one it took me, didn't take long to sort of pick out the game that I was really happy with, so this is the one I've chosen. Um, now Kaz is actually in his T-34-85. Now, the interesting thing about it is it's the only medium tank that's really sung for him. Um, and it's taken him a long time to actually find and locate um, a medium tank that he's been really happy with. Now, he played the A44 and other things like that. So he's he's played some amazing games over the last... Um, like we've played some great games together. And we've played some doozies. When I saw that, I thought he was driving around the KV-1S, but it's just the style of hole. They didn't change the hole from the mediums very much. They gave him pretty well the same turret. Um, now, we were both waiting for that 59 to pop up, and the funny thing is, there's actually a steward that pops up that we both shoot, and the 59 then shoots me. So, that was a bit bit of a poor, poor decision making there, but that's oh, the way it goes. Um, so, that's pretty well what's happening in tanks. More Thunder wise, I haven't played a lot um, this week. Uh, it, it's just been a very disappointing week for me, War Thunder wise. And I am sorry for everyone who does sort of watch my War Thunder videos. Um, I had to actually especially play a game today on War Thunder just so you guys had a War Thunder game to watch. Um, that was how bad it was. But, when you get friends that are only just sort of starting to play in World of Tanks, you sort of, you devote a lot more time to them and their needs. Um, upcoming reviews. Well, I am going to do a review this week. I might even have two coming out. Um, one of my reviews will be on the Cruiser Mark II. Um, it is, this is actually funny. Look at this. Set him on fire. <laughs> Only thing is now my hit log for some unknown reason had an error pop up on it and it stopped recording my damage after this point. So I didn't know how much damage I caused after this battle. But anyway. Um So yes, it's been been this is interesting. I fire and it lands just underneath him. That was incredible. I just take a snap pot shot. Pushed a little steward up a bit so I've got a bit of a shield if I need it. And we both called, alright, Black Prince is priority. Black Prince is priority. We need to take him out. But the KV-5 is trolling him a bit. He had a great game, this KV-5. Brilliant. Um. What was I saying? Thunder, historical, great game. Can't remember. This is the worst thing about it. Um, when you you're sort of offline, you drift in and out of different sections. You just I can't remember. Oh god. What were we talking about? Huh? People will probably sit there going, "Why are you not talking about what you're meant to be talking about?" Because I forgot. Oh dear. So anyway, let let let's pick a new topic. Um. Game-wise for me, um, I'm probably um, looking at, in the next few months, maybe doing a bit of WoW. Um, WoW is getting pretty close to release. Um, it's only a couple months away, so I may jump back in fairly soon.
just for the hell of it. But I don't know. So I will half-heartedly this scumbag, and then the cheeky devil, Kaz on the hill there, shoot my track off, <laughs> and that was the funny thing. I'm just driving along, watching the scumbag, and all of a sudden, boom, there goes the track, and here he is laughing up there on the train line. Good on ya, yeah you up there, and then of course. Me being me. Well, I can't let him get away with that. So I turn my gun around and fire off one round into him. So that was okay, that's the, the way it goes. So it wasn't too bad. Um, and he fires another one at me and just misses. Just, he, it used to be me doing that to him, so I, I, I fully respect the fact that he did that and things like that. So, uh, reviews this week, as I said, the Cruiser 2. Um, and I might actually do a KV1 review. Um, it, it, it's sort of, it's been a long time coming, the KV1 review, so there might be actually, you might actually be in for a bit of a treat this week with two reviews. Um, see how I go for time. Um, I go back to work this week, which is very unfortunate, so, uh, that's the way it goes. You can't, you can't live as a bludger all the time and go on fancy camps and stuff like that, so, um, it's going to be interesting. I will share as I pull all the pieces out of the tank. I've got my camera all ready to go to do that. As well as um, after I've done, so I'll take pictures progressively that I will show off on the tank as I'm gluing it all together. Um, I haven't purchased any paints for it yet. I will have to do that because I do have to paint the damn thing. It's a bit of a disappointment, but that's the way it goes. So. That's that. That's probably what's going to come up in the next few weeks. I've also got the HMS Victory that I've got to buy some paint for as well. So uh, I, I probably get a few paints and things this week for them and stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be good. But that's how that, guys. Look, I've had a great week playing games, and this has been the best week I've played in a long time. I don't know what it is. Um, I, I I think it comes down to Azaris. She has changed the way I've played tanks. Um, I've been playing a hell of a lot more aggressively, but a hell of a lot more cautiously at the same time in my aggression. Um, and it is paying off. I'm, I'm not doing the same mistakes I was when I was playing with Kaz. And I think it has slightly transferred over to him. So it will be interesting to see how him, I, and her go playing together. Um, we have played a few games tonight together. Um, we all did play light tanks at one stage, and it didn't work. So I jumped back on my Hertzer, grind up the Stug 3G, I think it is, or H. Oh, there's too many Stugs these days. So I'm ready for when we all get to Tier 5, I think it is. Yes, Tier 5, that I've got that Stug in the garage, ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Um, I'll just transfer my Hertz crew over to it so it's got a really good crew from the word go and off the bat and it should be amazing to play in um, but yeah guys enjoy what you do have fun don't don't take games seriously all the time it, it, it doesn't do anything for you um, well take them seriously enough but enjoy them that's the whole purpose of playing games. It's not about what you think you should do, what you shouldn't do, and all the other stuff. It's about having fun and playing to the best of your abilities at all times. Don't let your teams down. Um, don't, like, okay, admittedly, yes, you will do silly things, but try to avoid the silly things. And you'll find you'll have a better game, and you'll enjoy it a lot more, and you won't rage quit as often. Um, I probably had a little bit of a rage moment myself this evening, and that was only because I had a scumbag in two battles in a row just focus fire me. Whether whether you, whether he's watched my videos or something, I don't know, but 
I was not happy, but they were two different battles. So I doubt it very much. I think it was just the fact that, oh look, there's a light tank cruiser 2, take him out. Oh look, there's a KV-1, take him out. And I think that's just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just play the tanks and you get a big cross on you to hit them. So I did rage quit, but I only rage quit because I was frustrated. So guys, enjoy what you do. Um, play smart, have great games, happy hunting, I'll catch you in the skies, and I'll see you on the battlefields.